Welcome to Insight, today produced in partnership with KCOS 13 El Paso Public Television. Today we are chatting with Ruth Ellen Jacobson, Executive Director, and James Welsh, Assistant Conductor for the El Paso Symphony Orchestra. Ruth Ellen and James have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us. I'd like to thank you both for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having us. Thank you. So yeah. symphony music. Yep. The classical repertoire, right. but also the modern repertoire. When you a when little you bit, yes. Talk about symphony, symphonic music, in El Paso. Well, we're eighty-seven years young, the oldest continuously running symphony in the state of Texas, and here we are in little old El Paso. It's amazing, and we have a fabulous orchestra, world class, a great conductor, Boislav Rate. And we're very successful here. And you draw your the members of your orchestra from the community yes. itself. When we look at symphonic music across um, across the United States, across the world, it's hard to find more than just w white women or men. In this particular area, we have a tremendous balance between heritages and backgrounds, and one that we are proud to uh, basically note. Uh, is is the fact that our Hispanic culture and heritage is alive and well here in El Paso. And and one of the most important aspects of this is that that creates ownership within the community. When you when you are sitting in the audience and you see the mm -hmm. artists reflective of yourself and also reflective of your uh, of your sensibility, it creates an upwelling of pride and engagement that that wouldn't be there uh, if if that were absent. You're absolutely right, and and we are so fortunate to be able to have that here. Um, James did some uh, different work this year with uh, our sister city Juarez, and uh, brought together a huge component for the youth orchestras of both Juarez and El Paso. So we had a joint orchestra we called The Bridge. Do you? Sure. So um, this was started and started going, I suppose, uh, before my time here. I'm new to El Paso, maybe just a year and a half old here as an El Pasoan. But, um, but before my coming to this region, uh, there had been some discussion about pulling the people from Juarez and the people from El Paso together orchestrally, musically, mm -hmm humanitarianly, all of these things. So what we did is uh, we put our minds together once uh, I got in the same room with some of these people and we yeah. decided to make this happen. And so we saw the premiere of the Orquesta Filharmonica Juvenil, Mexico, USA, or The Bridge um, in January of this year, uh, which has been a tremendous uh, project and a tremendous thing which speaks to those same uh, things that you've mentioned about yeah. seeing the diversity in the audience and in the orchestra alike. So we have El Paso and Ciudad Juarez, America and Mexico together, working to bring music to people who love it and to teach them how to be closer. Now this type of project is, is difficult in any environment, but it is particularly difficult when you're crossing borders and linguistic barriers. Talk about the logistics of rehearsal of oh. just rehearsal, let alone the whole pre-discussion of, of uh, different music directors on it, and yeah. so on. But let's just talk <laughs> about rehearsal. How did you orchestrate orchestrate rehearsals? Well, <clears throat> this is a learning process not only for uh, people who are the organizers of this of this new orchestra, but also um, for the youth within it, um, who are the main reason why we bring the orchestra together in the first place. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of youth on both sides of the border who are bilingual, uh, by heritage, uh, just have a, a tremendous mix within them, within their cultures. Um, so to some extent, for the people who don't speak one language or the other, it may seem a little awkward, but we do have the unifying language of music itself and all of the musical terms that regardless of the country that you reside in, we all know very well. So to some extent, for some, it might be awkward to understand what the conductor is asking. Uh, for the conductor, it might be awkward to try to relay this in various different languages, two in this particular instance. And sometimes you just learn things and pick them up as you go along. Yeah. So it's been that sort of experience for all of us involved. But 
the buses. And oh, yeah. We had... We took our kids to Juarez to rehearse, and then we brought those kids to the United States to rehearse. And we had to have buses, and um, they crossed international borders, so there was permission slips and all kinds of passports. uh, Getting your instrument checked by border crossing guards and all of the things that international musicians know very well, but for these young people, it is an experience and one that they remember. How many uh, children um, participate in the youth orchestra? And uh, talk a little bit about how the youth orchestra and the symphony orchestra uh, interact um, in a a way that transfers knowledge. Sure. So within the El Paso Symphony Youth Orchestras, we have about 250, 260 kids. Um, That fluctuates from year to year. However, um, that's 250 to 60 young people throughout this region of El Paso, Las Cruces, New Mexico, Ciudad Juarez, uh, really, truly, who participate in our, in our youth orchestras. Yeah. Uh, if we're talking about the, the bridge, the joint binational, that can be anywhere from 150 to 200 kids when we count the choir, the choir and, and everything else that comes along with Esperanza Azteca. And our relationship with with the El Paso Symphony Youth Orchestras to the El Paso Symphony is one that I think probably you, Ruth Ellen, can speak a little more to how it we're, sort of originated. We're one in the same. We, we operate under the same 501c3. The board of the El Paso Symphony Orchestra is the main overseer. The youth orchestra has a board, but that reports up to the big board. Um, we're responsible for the funding of it and the, all the things that go along with it. Um, James is, does the auditions and the musical end of it. The, everything else falls on the, the El Paso Symphony. The El Paso Symphony, one third of the budget goes to our youth programs. So it's a big commitment, but we see it as the future of our art form. And so we do take it seriously and we put a, a lot in of resources into our youth programs. We have another one. We have our youth orchestra and we have an after school program called Tocando. Also El Sistema based. Yes. So talk about Tocando. There's a school here called Bowie High. That's our focus. We're um, going to all the feeder schools that feed into this one high school. And we're hoping to make a huge difference through music and impact the kids that finally get to the high school and hopefully then go on to college. We're closely working with the university and um, the program are an El Sistema model. The El Sistema model came out of Venezuela many years ago. It's so this is the this is uh, people forget that the conductor of the L.A. Phil exactly came he out started of, it. He started it uh, at yes. Gustavo Dudamel. Yes, yes. So we use that model, and uh, we're we're we started at one school, and now we're in two, and we're hoping to go. We have three more to go to before we go to the high school. Um, it's. It teaches music, but it, it really works to build an individual child. We're not looking to the next make the next Gustavo Dudamel, although that would be fabulous. It's not our goal. Our goal is to impact these kids to get to show them all kinds of things and to make their lives better and to show them a way that they can get to college. So talk about your audience. Some um, uh, symphony orchestras have a really difficult time attracting a diverse audience. And and they really are struggling right now. My understanding is that you don't have that kind of a struggle in, in, in and you have in, in certain respects mm-hmm. been able to address uh, at least part of that, uh, of that uh, issue that other people uh, find. This year we did some different advertising uh, that has really changed a lot of what we're seeing coming in the doors now. Um, we do the traditional uh, newspaper and uh, mailers to right. our our hardcore, you know, classical patrons who are but, who are generally older. Yes, and they're generally wider. Yes, but for those new 
patrons. We have started doing social media and um, the way we sell tickets has changed totally. Uh, we now see huge amounts of tickets being sold online overnight and not so much calling up our offices. We're dealing with a, a, a landscape, a media landscape where, you know, yeah. sound bites and, and tweets are really yeah. getting some attention. And if you can, yeah. if you can <laughs> monopolize on that, then we're going to try to do it. We have to. Yeah. We have to make sure that people understand that we're still here and we're still here for their benefit. And we benefit from them as well. And this is the way to keep symphonic music vital. It is one way. One way. Yeah. One, way. Yeah. one way amongst many <laughs> as many. you improvise your way into the future. Exactly. Yeah. Ruth Ellen Jacobson, James Welsh, thank you so thank much you. for sharing the work of the El Paso Symphony uh, Orchestra, thank you very much. the Youth Orchestra, your programs, and thank you so much for your mm -hmm. insights. Thank, thank you, you so much.